Wonderland time. One of the best opportunities to get in right now, not because of the price, but because of the bonding. This video is going to break down why right now is one of the best times to actually participate in the bonds or the mints as they call it, because this just became so lucrative because of this dip. Welcome to the Hidden Gem Network. And for those of you that are new here, my name is Dan. I'm just a regular guy in the DeFi space, the crypto space, sharing my knowledge as I learn with you guys as well. So with that being said, I'm super excited about this video because a lot of people have asked me about bonding and staking uh, the differences and how they both work and which one's more profitable. Now, active, uh, in order to go ahead and understand bonding, it's more active. You have to be more active in it because it doesn't auto compound on itself. You have to go ahead and keep, uh, you essentially have to keep on staking, keep, uh, you know, providing liquidity, right? So the process of bonding it, coming straight from Wonderland time is when users mint time tokens, they are actually selling. You're essentially giving these time tokens, these assets that you mint, right? If you buy it from like Trader Joe, uh, which again, a lot of you probably have in order to get time, what you're doing is you're basically giving it back to Wonderland saying, here, have my time and exchange you're buying a bond that guarantees that not only will they give you back that certain time, but they're going to give you more time. They're minting more time for you over a vested period. And essentially a vested period means like, you know, over a X, Y, and Z amount of days, it's not all given back to you at one time, but also your, your initial bond is locked. However, the mint that you get, the, the amount that you're actually uh, paying for the minting is, is this much right here. You're paying $5,279, even though the time price is currently $5,679. But here's the thing. If you're minting at $5,278, and if you believe in the market, again, if we take a look at Bitcoin and just the overall market consensus, we see that the market is going ahead and swinging back to the upside. So that means that essentially, theoretically, these DAOs, these protocols, these OHM forks should also see a positive swing to the upside as well as investors come back into speculative plays and they can harbor their money in again since they feel safer, right? So long story short, if you're getting, uh, if you're getting a bond of time with the allocated, a uh, guaranteed price of $5,278, right? What happens when time goes up to 8,000 or even if it reaches $7,000 now, or let's just say it reaches 7,300. Now you're at a $2,000 profit on the minted time that you get, whatever, you know, the, the actual amount that you get is. So you're getting time minted at a, an extreme, uh, you know, discount and you're still getting your time back essentially, but it's not auto compounded. You're going to have to, every single time it's done, uh, your, your bond is, uh, pretty much expired. You'll have to go ahead and, uh, reapprove and restake the actual LP or whatever you're, you know, whatever you're staking at that, at that point inside of the bonds. So the reason why this is lucrative is because you always should, should consider bonding when the price dips on a, uh, on a doubt very, very heavily because you get rewarded extremely well because the price is so low and they're giving you tokens at a discounted rate, but the market is already discounted. So you're getting like, it's like walking in on a 25% off sale on black Friday. So it's like, it's just stacking. It's like a layer of a cake. It's, it's very intriguing. Now here's the one thing that I've been trying to do a lot of research on all day today is the thought process of impermanent loss because as an LP, so as a liquidity pool provider, you face what's known as impermanent loss. Now, permanent loss is a very interesting uh, negative side effect of providing an LP, but I don't know, and I'm going to do more research on this and I'll create updated videos as I learn more. I'm going to start asking a lot of my friends what they know and just start picking a lot of people's brains because I don't know if impermanent loss, like with Uniswap, PancakeSwap, uh, other decentralized exchanges, when you provide provide liquidity for other tokens on that, uh, on those particular DEXs, you face what's known as impermanent loss. And let me just kind of go over a little brief summary of what impermanent loss does and is. So impermanent loss right here happens when you provide liquidity to a DEX. So again, and I keep emphasizing a DEX because, uh, these, these OHM forks, these DAOs are not DEXs. They are minting their own tokens to give to us if we bond. So it's not acting as an exchange. So that's the logic that I'm going through, which is why I'm not too sure hundred percent if impermanent loss also applies here, which again, I don't think it does, 
but I'll make an update if I am incorrect. Because again, like I said, I'm not perfect, but I'm going to give you the knowledge that I have at hand and the logic that I'm using and why that is. But you should know about impermanent loss for any future endeavor in the crypto space, whether it's a DAO, whether it's providing liquidity, you should know what it is first off, because you can lose literally everything you put in. It's, it's high risk being an LP, but it also is very high reward. So Right over here, a permanent loss happens when you provide liquidity to an LP, to a liquidity pool, and the price of your deposited asset changes compared to when you deposited them. The bigger the change is, the more you are exposed to an impermanent loss. So this is a great example, right? So uh, Alice right here deposits one Ethereum and 100 DAI in a uh, essentially an automated market maker, an AMM, okay? So the deposited token pairs need to be equivalent value. So if one Ethereum is 100 uh, DAI or 100 DAI, 100 USD, you know, pegged whatever stable coin, you need to have 100 USDT, 100 USDC, 100 uh, DAI, or if let's just say you do Ethereum and pancake swap, which is the cake token, let's just say the cake token is $25 at the time and Ethereum is 100. That means you have one Ethereum and four cake tokens that you create that contract with and provide liquidity. It always has to be a one-to-one. -one. So when we create in a few minutes this actual LP with, uh, with MIM time, you're going to see how I do it. I'm going to show you how I create all this live. So you, it has to be a one-to-one. -one. However, uh, that means the price of Ethereum is 100, yada, yada, you get it, that you deposited. This also means that the uh, dollar value of Alice's deposit is 200 USD, exactly. So whatever you deposit, if you were to deposit 100 Ethereum and, and four cake at $25, that's $200 uh, in, in equity, essentially. Not 100, it's it's 200 total. So in addition, there's a total of 10 Ethereum and 1,000 DAI in that theoretical pool, funded by other LPs, so other people that are per, uh, participating in the pool. So Alice, in this case, has 10% because she she put in 100 out of the 1,000, right? So that's 10%, obviously. Now, let's say the price of Ethereum increases to 400 DAI. So one Ethereum equals $400, whatever, you know, uh, whatever the stable coin is. In this case, it's DAI. It would be one Ethereum equals $400 or 400 DAI in this case, right? So while this is happening, arbitrage traders will add DAI to the pool and remove Ethereum until the ratio reflects the current price. Remember, the automated market makers don't have order books. What determines the price of assets in this ratio, uh, in the pool, is the ratio between them in the pool. While liquidity remains constant in the pool, in this case, they're using 10,000 as the total liquidity, the ratio of the assets change. Now, here's where it gets tricky, right? If Ethereum is now 400 DAI, the ratio between how much Ethereum and how much DAI is in the pool has changed given, you know, how much, if you're a, a new LP provider, you're going to have to, uh, you know, provide different than what I would have to do if I was at a 100 and 100. So now in this case, instead of the original 10,000 each and a thousand die in the pool, there is, as they mentioned right over here, now five Ethereum and 2,000 die in the pool, given the arbitrage traders, okay? So Alice, this imaginary woman, decides to withdraw her funds. As we know from earlier, you're, she's entitled to 10% because that's what she put in at the time. Her stake of the pool was 10%. As a, resu as a result, she can only withdraw 0.5 Ethereum and 200 die, and that totals 400 USD in totality, right? Now, this is what's crazy, okay? So yes, she made profit because she initially put in $200, right? So uh, one Ethereum and 100 DAI, let's just theoretically say it's worth 200 at the time. However, she withdrew 0.5 Ethereum. She got back 0.5 Ethereum and, uh, and, and 200 DAI right? Because again, it's a, it's a one-to-one. -one. So 0.5 Ethereum is worth uh, 200 die. So she has 200 die liquid and 0.5 Ethereum. Now here's where impermanent loss kicks in. If Ethereum goes up, let's just say it goes to, um, you know, it goes to X, Y, and Z price. She would actually have made more money holding Ethereum than providing liquidity and, and getting the uh, getting the actual die. So because die is stable. Now where it becomes very risky, the, having a stable coin liquidity isn't terrible as long as the underlying token that you're providing liquidity for is somewhat trusted. And that's why you see crazy sky high APYs on these yield farms. Check this out. So I'm gonna use this as a quick example and then I'm gonna tie it all back to Wonderland time so you understand what's happening here. So this is Beefy. Beefy's a yield farm, okay? We could see 
these APYs are fairly low, but yield farming, they're, they're actually relatively high. We, we're pampered because we are in, uh, we're in DAOs. We're in this, these are yield farming protocols, but just understand this, okay? Look, static BUSD is paying 10% daily. Now the TVL locked is $464,000. Now here's the thing. Let's just theoretically say, uh, in order to, in order to provide liquidity, you have to have the static token and you have to have BUSD. So let's just say static is uh, $5 per token at the time. That means you provide one static and five BUSD in this pool. If the price of, of a static ends up going up, then you might actually, if you were to withdraw, you might actually have more die than static, which means that yes, technically speaking, you might've made money for providing liquidity. However, it might've been more profitable for you because you can only withdraw. You can only, uh, you know, you can only unstake X amount of static and you'll have more BUSD, which is a stable coin. Yes, you make profit. It's, it's a you know, guaranteed profit, but the impermanent loss occurs on, uh, incurs on the token because if you held it, you could have made more money rather than uh, staking it in a liquidity pool. Now, let's flip the script here as to why I don't necessarily think that impermanent loss would occur. However, I think there might be a possibility. And again, I have to do more research on this and ask my friends uh, that are really ingrained into this because now that you understand that, let's think about what happens when it's not a stable coin, right? Because the stable coin remains stable obviously. And what happens if it's a volatile uh, token like time? And what if it's another volatile token? Now, what you need to understand here is time AVAX LP. Okay. This is interesting. Okay. So if you stake time, it's it, obviously it fluctuates, right? And we also see that it, uh, the liquidity you would need to provide is time AVAX and AVAX goes up and down. So long story short is that if both of these go down, your loss is going to be significant in comparison to staking time magic internet money and magic internet money acts like a stable. So again, that's why right now, this is a prime opportunity to stake in the LP, but how do you do it? How do you get involved? Well, it's your lucky day because I just so happen want to bond. So let's see if my, okay, cool. So my AVAX is here. And how exactly am I going to do all this? How am I going to structure uh, this LP? So I haven't done this on Wonderland yet. This is my first time bonding, but I have provided liquidity in the past. So it should be the same process. So if I hover over to time, uh, I'm going to need a one-to-one -one ratio. So time mim LP. So I'm going to head over to right over here. Let me just, click, oh, I already added time token. Let me just click buy on Trader Joe. And let me click, I understand. All right, um, an update, got it. All right, so let me just take a look if MIM is here. Okay, so MIM is here. So first thing is first, I'm going to need to do some quantum physics here and insane math, I'm just kidding. Um, we have to see what Wonderland is currently worth because, or what AVAX is currently worth, excuse me. So now what I have to do is grab how much AVAX I have. All right, and I'll just put 18 for simplicity. So 18. So I have $1,680. So that means if I divide 1,680 by two, 1,680 by two, we have $845. Now, $845, what is that in, 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 in regards to Wonderland, right? Because I need to buy $845 worth of Wonderland. So what I'm gonna do is rather than putting time at the bottom, I'm just gonna put USD E and I'm gonna, just gonna put right here, uh, at the top, what I'll do, or no, I'll leave it to AVAX 845 and that's 9.06. So 845 USDC, again, a stable until you see an hour ago, it literally rugged. No, I'm just kidding. 845, 9.05 AVAX. And then we're going to go back to time. So we're going to put 9.05 AVAX. We're going to click on swap here. We're going to click confirm swap. And so we're going to click confirm. And from my AVAX, I'm going to go and I'm going to add in MIM. And in which case, how much MIM do I want? I'm going to put 846 just so I have a dollar extra, just in case, um, or one MIM extra. Um, so I'm going to click swap over here, confirm swap, click on the good old confirm. And I'm going to head back to and make sure add MIM to wallet. Never mind, it's right here. Great button. So let's see here. 
So it is currently transacting and we can see that I now, I now have nothing in my wallet. Just kidding. Okay, cool. So we have the time and we have the magic internet money. What I'm going to do is I'm not even going to go back to Wonderland. I'm just going to click on pool at the top because that's what it is. Oh, look at that. It's, it's the first one. Magic internet money time. Liquidity five. Wow, that's a lot. <laughs> so, okay. So we're going to click on this literal pool. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on max for magic internet money. What I have up here and insufficient time balance. Okay. So we'll do max on, on our time and we'll just approve MIM and we will approve time. All right, confirm, confirm. And we're gonna wait for these to confirm. And then I'm gonna click on the supply button. Now this supply button is gonna basically create us an LP token, a liquidity pool token, a contract essentially that we're going to give to, uh, that we're going to give to Wonderland. And we're gonna put that into Wonderland. So I'm gonna click on max for, for time again. All right, if it, if it ever allows me to click it, unless it's all gone and I lost everything. This is my impermanent loss as I was talking about. So great. Oh, there we go. <laughs> so I'll click max. Let's see, max insufficient. Yeah, 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 got it. Okay, confirm supply. AVAX is so fast. This is phenomenal. Cool. So it's going to supply it. All right, it's going to go ahead and just confirm it. It should probably take a few seconds. And then from here, what I'm going to do, I'm going to head back into Wonderland. Great. So we're back on Wonderland. And if you take a look in your wallet, you have the, uh, the, the liquidity pool contract or token here. So what you're going to do is you're actually going to head into where it says mint. You're going to click on mint. It'll say approve for, oh, it says approve for me too. So I'm going to have to approve this really quickly. Uh, actually it's time AVAX. Let me go to, uh, time MIM. So this changed the, uh, the AP, the ROIs, the APYs changed. So let me go here. Uh, and there we go. I'll click max and you can see I can click mint right over here and I'll click confirm. And so now we are locking our, our funds in for five days. The ROI is 5.56, but that's okay because we're going to get this much time, okay? We're 0 0.3105 time. And long story short, when we go ahead and unstake and redeem, we'll be able to cash out the, the magic internet money and time and whatever the value is of time at that given time, it'll be a one-to-one. -one. Now, let's just say time is worth uh, $10,000 at the time. However, when I redeem, I personally only have $500 worth of time, like actually worth of time. However, if you see, I will have a guaranteed amount of time that they're giving back to me. Like you just saw with, with, you know, you will get X amount of time. And because it's, it's discounted so heavily, if the price goes to 10 K it's like me basically doubling my investment here. So again, let's just say it, uh, the initial LP that I put in, I put in, as you saw, $1,600. So let's just say time goes to 10,000 and I redeem that LP, I might only have $400 worth of, L, uh, worth of time that I get back. However, uh, I'll still have my 1600 because it'll be in magic internet money. So the, the remainder of the 1600, the 1200 will be in, M, uh, in MIM. However, I'll still have that time that I was, that I was given for bonding. So now I'm getting that again, it doesn't compound, which stinks, but Again, this is why right now bonding is so lucrative because it's so, so cheap to, well, it's not cheap, but it's, it's, out, it's on a dip. So if you buy on a dip and you, and you predict that the market's going to swing back to the upside, then this is your time to, to stake a bond, to go ahead and provide liquidity. This is so lucrative right now. Also really quickly, speaking of Immortal Monks that I mentioned in yesterday's video, they put out uh, a, a new announcement in their Discord revealing inside of their DAO what's gonna happen. Uh, and this is, I, I find this so awesome. Um, right over here, they were, they said and they stated, that the initial APY when first launching, because it's a new DAO, again, this is this is correct, will be in the six to nine figures. Now, they don't want to state incorrect numbers because an oracle determines that. So what I'm going to recommend you guys do is in the link down below, join Immortal Monks. You're still early. They're launching the Monks NFT that you use to stake in that DAO to get a boosted APY. They're launching that on the 16th of this month. I'm already whitelisted. Thanks so much to you guys. And I also think I'm going to win the, uh, the invite contest, the invite giveaway for that airdrop of a monk. And right over here, right up here. I think I'm going to win this. If I win this, it's going to you guys. And I'm going to post it on my Instagram story. So the giveaway is going to happen on my Instagram story. 
However, you can see my Instagram and all my social links down below. I would recommend to follow. Actually, I'm not even going to recommend it. I hope you follow. I'm going to give this away. All right. So it, it's to you guys. And also since I'm whitelisted, I get to mint two and they are, they're 0.22 Ethereum because I'm whitelisted, but 0.25 Ethereum for the public. It's a little costly. I would admit for, for, you know, just a regular person. However, the APY boost that you get is just, is just ridiculous. So, um, like the, the actual utility of it is just ridiculous, which is going to boost the floor price, which you can flip that NFT so easily. So again, I'm not, uh, not sponsored at all, not, you know, chilling this down your throat, but check, uh, just follow them, watch their DAO. You have a first mover advantage. Take t- like, just, just take it. So yesterday I talked about them. They had under a thousand. Now they have over 4,000 members. So they're growing so fast. Be a first mover. I'm giving you inside info. My socials are down below. Discords are down below. Uh, my social security is down below. Bank account number. Um, my blood type. No, I'm just kidding. So again, guys, I'm Dan from the Hidden Gem Network. Thanks so much for watching a video. I love you all and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye guys.